Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Pele, Birth of a Legend, released in the year 2016. The movie opens up by introducing the upcoming game in the 1958 FIFA World Cup. The match is between Brazil and the USSR. A huge crowd can be seen cheering for the game while the commentary is all negative, criticizing Brazil's way of playing football. At the same time, the scene shifts to Brazil's locker room, where the youngest player ever to play the World Cup, Pele, is introduced. After that, the scene shifts to eight years earlier, where we can see a group of children polishing shoes and desperate to play football. Because of the harsh living conditions, the children have no proper football to play with. Hence, they steal some clothes from their neighborhood and stuff them into socks to make a football. Soon, the group starts playing with the self-made football, throwing it from roof to roof and not letting it touch the ground. Later, one of the children playing football, Dico, is scolded by his mother for returning home dirty. In the next scene, a group of men, including Dico's father, are listening to a football commentary while sitting at a restaurant. It's the 1950 FIFA World Cup final between Brazil and Uruguay, and everyone is wishing for Brazil to win the game. The children can also be seen on the broken roof of the restaurant trying to get information about the ongoing game. Unfortunately, Brazil loses the game. As a result, Dico's father bursts into tears. Seeing his father cry, Dico promises that he will win the World Cup for his country one day. The next day, Dico's mother takes him to her workplace, which is a huge mansion, to clean the floors. There, she explains to him about how his father ruined his football career after getting an injury, and it's the reason she doesn't want him to play football. As soon as she steps out of the kitchen, a group of rich boys arrive there and start talking about different football players. Dico also tries to join their conversation and takes the name of a local football player, Bele, but mispronounces it as Pele. The boys make fun of him and start teasing him with the same name, Pele. Meanwhile, Dico's mother returns and asks him to apologize to the boys even though he was not at fault. Before leaving, Dico grabs a piece of newspaper brought by the boys, mentioning a football tournament. Afterwards, we see Dico and his group approaching the same football tournament and enlisting themselves in. Though they look poor and have no proper football kit, they have amazing football skills to leave behind almost every football team in the tournament. Soon, they reach the finals, where they're pitted against the same team of boys who made fun of Dico at his mother's workplace. The boys are considerably older than Dico and his group, and also have a proper football kit. The leader of the group makes fun of Dico's group, teasing them by the name of Shoeless Boys, as Dico's team are playing on the tournament without wearing football boots. After hearing the insults, his team decides to acquire boots for the next game at any cost. Later, the group plans to steal peanuts and sell them to get second-hand boots. While in the act, they are noticed by the seller, who chases them. However, Dico and his boys manage to sneak out and reach the market. In the next scene, while the group is selling the peanuts to the public, the finalist group of boys reach there and start insulting them again. Dico gets angry at their insults and hits the leader, resulting in a fight between the two groups. At home, Dico's mother confronts him about the bruises, to which he replies that his teacher beat him. Dico's father intervenes and mentions that he will see the teacher the next day. Once the mother is gone, Dico's father takes him to his workplace and on the way tells him that he knows about the fight and also the football match. Instead of being angry, he suggests that Dico keep aside his emotions and reply to the opponents with his skills. Knowing that his father is by his side, Dico becomes happy. The big day finally arrives. Everyone present there is cheering for the rich boys, but they also make fun of Dico by calling him Pele. Dico and his team finally manage football boots, but they appear to be too big for their size. However, they still wear the uncomfortable boots, which makes Dico and his team slow. Taking this as their advantage, the opponent team scores goal after goal and takes the score to 6-0. to zero. Dico and his team are hopeless about the situation and are furious with the opponents about their foul playing. Enraged, Dico attempts to attack the opponents but stops after noticing his father among the audience. He then decides to take off the uncomfortable shoes and play the game as they did in their streets. After that, he gets the ball and dodges around the opponents surprising the crowd with his amazing skills and scoring the first goal. Soon, all of his teammates take off their oversized boots and start playing their way. Right then, the game takes a huge turn and Dico's team starts dominating the game. 
All of his teammates managed to dribble between the opponents and score goals, pushing the score to 6-5. Unfortunately, Deco and his team lose the game, but the crowd seem to be impressed by their mesmerizing performance. Right then, everyone starts chanting the name Pele. As soon as the game is over, they spot the men from whom they stole the peanuts the other day. The men give them a chase, causing the young boys to run into the forest. One of Pele's friends trips over a branch and falls on the ground. Pele returns to help him and takes him to a small hole in the ground to hide. Suddenly, it starts raining and a landslide occurs. This buries his friend and he ultimately dies. A distraught Pele returns to his home and cries in front of his mother, blaming himself for his friend's death. The following day, Pele's father takes him to his workplace, aiming to distract him from his friend's tragedy. He tries to cheer him up by showing some of his skills as he plays with mangoes. Pele ignores him for some days, but later starts joining him and practicing with the mangoes. Cut to a few years later and Pele is now 15 years old. His mother notices him practicing with his father and finally decides to call a football scout named Waldemar de Brito to watch him play. When Pele returns home, he's happy to see Waldemar inside his home waiting for him. Waldemar suggests Pele participate in the trials of the local football club. In the next scene, Pele is training for professional football with the Santos football team. He starts out poorly and finds it difficult to adapt to the traditional technique of playing football. Discouraged with the way he plays, Pele decides to return back to his home. While he's at the train station, Waldemar meets him and asks him about the reason for his return. Pele replies that he feels like his way of playing football is not accepted in the academy and the coach does not like him. Waldemar explains that his way of playing football is considered as the Jenga style, which was used in the era of slavery. He mentions that he plays best in the same style, but adds that the style was blamed for Brazil's World Cup loss in 1950. At last, he suggests Pele to either stay and prove to the world about his talent or return home as a coward. After Waldemar leaves, Pele thinks for a while and decides to stay. The next day while playing a match, Pele makes some bad calls and upsets himself and his coach. Suddenly, he remembers him and his father training with the mangoes and notices Waldemar cheering for him. He then decides to play like the way he knows. He gets the ball and dribbles it with ease between the legs of the opponents. He kicks the ball in the air like he practiced with the mangoes and sends it into the net for a goal. The coach is shocked by the way Pele scored the goal and asks him to do it again. Pele scores again, surprising all the spectators with his old technique of playing football. He continues to do it with other teams and starts making a name for himself despite being the youngest player in the team. Soon after, Pele gets promoted from the junior team to the pro team, playing matches with the teams all around the country. After his trip, he pays a surprise visit to his home, bringing some gifts for the family, including a radio for his father. They decide to listen to the announcement of Brazil's national squad for the 1958 World Cup. Pele has no hope that he can be selected for the national team, as he is too young. Despite this, they listen to the announcement, and to their surprise, Pele gets selected in the team. During Pele's departure with the national team, his father tells him to believe in himself and his way of playing football. Pele leaves and later meets with his teammates, who seem to be friendly. However, the reporters present there make fun of Brazil's way of playing Jenga-style football at international level. After that, the national team coach calls Pele for a meeting and warns him against playing the Jenga style of football. The next day, Pele tries to play the traditional European way, like the coach suggested, but finds it difficult. He then decides to try his own way, but gets tripped and injures his knee in the process. The team doctor examines him and sadly confirms that the injury may rule him out of the World Cup. At night, Pele calls his mother and informs her about his injury. His mother is shocked to hear it, but still encourages him to have faith and take care of himself. The World Cup starts and the Brazilian team manages to win a couple of starting games. As the games are too brutal and competitive, several players from the team get injured. Left with no other alternative, an injured Pele is asked to play for his country. Nervous, Pele makes a couple of excuses, but his coach forces him to play. In the next scene, Pele, along with his team, gets onto the field, with his coach reminding him to stick to the plan and play the traditional way of football. During the game, Pele plays as his coach suggested, and the Brazilian team manages to win the game. The next game is against France, and it's the semi-final. 
The Brazilian team is behind France with 1-0 on the board after the first half. During the interval, Pele looks around the dressing room and notices the injured and tired players. He gets discouraged and approaches one of his teammates to replace him in the second half. However, his teammate refuses, citing that he is not in the proper mental state to play football. He further adds that he's fed up with the traditional European way of playing football and wants to play the Jenga style like they used to play during their childhood. At last, he suggests Pele play the Jenga style of football and win the match for his team. After the half, Pele returns to play the game and when he misses a pass, he remembers about his teammate suggesting him to play the Jenga way. Pele then attacks the ball and starts dribbling between the players with ease and perfection. Everyone is shocked looking at Pele bouncing the ball over the players to score a majestic goal for his team. After the scores are level, Pele scores two more goals to seize the victory for his team and secure a position in the finals. With the final with Sweden approaching, the Brazilian national coach calls for a team meeting and orders the team to play the traditional way of football. He tries to teach them some clever tactics and also suggests them to mimic the Swedish players' formation in the game. In the training, he tries to make the players play with the formations but sees no improvement in the game. During the press conference between the two teams, the Swedish team coach makes fun of Brazil's way of playing. He further adds that if Brazil continues to play the same style, they will lose the finals as they did in 1950. Frustrated with the opponent coach demoralizing the national team, Brazil's coach storms off from the conference. At night, Pele calls his father and reveals about the dire situation of the team. Hearing this, his father suggests him to unite the team like he used to do during his childhood. The next day, thinking of uniting the team, Pele challenges the players to take the ball from the hotel to the nearest lighthouse. At first, all the players refuse, but soon they agree to join. They start kicking the football around without letting it touch the ground. Upon seeing this, the coach also realizes what he's teaching is wrong to the team. Shortly after, he confronts the team and admits his mistake for teaching them the formations and other traditional style of football. He suggests the team to play the Jenga style in the finals and show the world the Brazilian way of playing football. He further encourages his team to enjoy the game and to put out an amazing game against Sweden in the finals. It's the day of the finals and both teams are ready to face each other. The whistle blows and the Swedish team scores within four minutes of the play. All the Brazilian supporters are in shock with the Swedish players whirling around Pele, stopping him from getting the ball. But soon, the Brazilian players compose themselves and Pele assists to score the first goal for the team. One after another, the Brazilian team scores and so does Pele. Soon the final whistle blows and the game ends with a scoreline of 5-2. Brazil wins the World Cup for the first time in history. All of Pele's teammates storm into the ground and lift Pele on their shoulders. The scene then shifts to the real moments after Brazil wins the finals. In the last scene, we're informed about how Pele was declared a national treasure by the Brazilian president in 1961. Pele holds the world record for most goals and is also the youngest player to score a goal in the World Cup. He is also the only player to win three FIFA World Cups. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.